if you think a little bit of snow is going to stop us, you are wrong. Welcome back everyone. This week we're going to be making a luxury banoffee pie. Now the reason it's going to be a luxury banoffee pie instead of just a normal banoffee pie is I want to use brandy with the bananas, a bit of brown sugar and cook them off. I'm going to put a bit of sugar and show you a nice way to do the base for your biscuit base as well. And I'm going to use Chantilly cream on, on top. Now the first time I tried or ever encountered banoffee pie, I was only about 10 years old and a friend of mine, she made it at school and I tried some. And because my brother and her sisters told her that they didn't like it, I told her I didn't like it either. But I absolutely loved it. Right, let's crack on and make this pie, shall we? Right, the first thing you want to do is get your food processor out for your digestive biscuits. If you don't have one, use the old fashioned way of a plastic bag and a rolling pin. And you'll resemble a fine crumb at the end of it. So when you put the butter into it, there's no hard bits. No little surprises when you're chewing into it later. Now with the butter, what you want to do is cube it up, put it into a saucepan, and you want to burn it. Yes, I said burn it. You want it black, you want it dead, you want it completely buggered, because that way you get a nice smoky texture and flavor in your biscuits. There's different stages of butter. You can emulsify it and clarify it. First of all, you can split it. Or when you get a little bit further on, you get a nice little chestnutty brown flavour and colour, and then you burn it. It's from an old classic dish, English dish, with skate wings with black butter and capers. I tell you what, black butter is fantastic in cooking. Okay, so the butter is officially burnt. That is how you want it. You want it black, dead, completely done. Okay, pour it into your biscuit base. It's going to fizz it up a little bit. Just be careful. Maybe I'll open a window as well. Get a spoon and just stir it all together. Like that. You don't want to use your hand because that butter is bloody hot. So incorporate it all together. Now that will incorporate, you want to add half a tablespoon of sugar. Just to take the bitter edge off, you still have the nice smoky flavour, but you won't get the bitterness of it. Now that it's cooled down a bit for five minutes as well, you can actually touch it and it won't burn you. I prefer to use smaller moulds, because I think it's better having an individual piece rather than trying to cut it up and it going messy. But you can use like a spring form cake tin or removable bottom base, it's entirely up to you. What you'll do is get this in there. I use this as well because you can also push it down nice and flat, get a nice even surface out of it. Right, I've done the base is about a centimetre thick. You don't want too much, so you're eating just biscuit, it's going to be horrible. You don't want too little, so when you do cut into it, it's just going to crumble. You want it just right. Now pop these bad boys in the fridge for about an hour and we'll start doing the bananas. Now the ideal banana you want to use is not overly ripe, you want it still yellow, little black bits on it but not hot, not really a lot of black on it because it'd be too mushy. You want it still quite firm as well. Because you're gonna be cooking in a bit of sugar and a bit of brandy, you don't want to mush up into a paste. A little bit al dente still. Now you want to cut a banana into about a centimeter pieces as well. Any old fashion you like, do rounds or do them a little bit straight, a little bit longer, it's up to you. About that thickness is perfect. Okay, so in the pan I've got one tablespoon of soft brown sugar and about 20 grams of butter. Melt that down. Get a little bit bubbling, pop your bananas in, after a few minutes turn them over, a little bit of brandy, set it on fire and flambe it, then we'll take it out, we'll put them on our bases. Right, so the butter and sugar are emulsified together, pop your bananas in, and cook them for a couple of minutes each side, then gently flip them over, then we'll put a little bit of brandy in, cook them for another couple of minutes, and we'll take them out. I'll put my plate for now. Now the reason I put a little bit of butter in with it, the sugar as well, is just so the sugar doesn't burn as quickly. Unfortunately, sugar does have that tendency to burn. It's only in the low heat and the low flame, but just in case, you don't want to ruin it. Right, so after a couple of minutes, you're going to flip these bananas over. You don't want to burn on the base. Do it gently, do not touch the sugar and the butter combination because it will stick to your skin for about 120 degrees at the moment, which is uh, very hot. Beautiful caramelization on the bananas. Just how you want it. 
Right, just as we turn them over, you want to add your brandy. You only want about a tablespoon, not too much. You want to try and catch the flame. Beautiful. What that does is, it burns off the excess alcohol. So you don't get too all of a twist while you're eating it. Just don't do what Will Smith does in this scene in the Fresh Pinch of Bel Air where he sits the entire kitchen like, because I don't think your partner or your parents or anyone would be very happy with you. Okay, you want to take these bananas out, put them onto a plate. Let them cool down for five minutes as well. We we'll start doing the toffee. Now I'm not going to lie, I did cheat a bit. You're supposed to get a can of condensed milk, boil it for a few hours, turn it into a nice milk toffee. But what's the point in doing that? We can actually go out and buy a tin of milk toffee. Makes sense to me. Okay, so what I bought is carnation caramel. It's so much easier than boiling up a tin of condensed milk because they've done the hard part for you already. Now I put a little bit in each base and spread it over. So that'll be your second part of the base. So you've got biscuits on bottom, caramel on top of that. Then when that's set in the fridge and the bananas are cooled down, you can put your bananas on top. It's not hard, it's a very easy dessert to make. Just a few uh, processes to go with it. So the caramel is on top. Take your bananas that have cooled down. It should be nice and sticky. And pop a few on top of there as well. Just so then when you cut into it, every bite you get a bit of biscuit, a bit of toffee, a bit of banana. And obviously a nice bit of cream as well. When you've put all these on, back in the fridge, let it set a bit more, and then we'll do the cream. Now to make the cream, we're going to make a Chantilly cream, which is basically a nice light cream with extracts of vanilla and sweetness of the sugar in it as well. It goes beautifully. Literally, open the cream up, pour it in. This will be more than enough for a small six inch round cake tin worth or even the three desserts that I'm doing. You want a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now vanilla extract and flavour are two completely different ones. Extract is a proper one which with actual extracts of vanilla. Flavouring is all chemicals. Avoid the flavouring, go for the extract. Let's chuck a teaspoon of that in. Beautiful stuff this is. If I could drink it, I would. And now, you want two teaspoons, the lid goes on probably, of sugar. Pop it on top. Now whip it up until it's just past soft peaks. It's perfect. You don't want it really hard. You want it nice and light and fluffy and smooth and just beautiful. Now when your cream is about at this stage, where it's kind of holding itself, turn the electric whisk off. Because in a matter of seconds, you're gonna bugger your dessert up. Finish it off with a hand whisk. Now all whisking is, is basically, you're agitating your cream. You're incorporating air and you're making it thicken. Literally a few strokes and it should be there. See it's getting thicker already. It's holding itself even more now. It's going to like a Mr. Whippy. Literally just a little bit there. That's how you want it. It's holding itself proper now. Beautiful. And when you turn it very slowly moves, not much at all. Beautiful. Right, it's ready to go on the rest of it. Right, this bit you can either pipe the cream on, do it a little bit messy, do a few points on it, 
or you can just put it on and smooth it over, it's up to you. I prefer to spoon the cream on and then getting a palette knife, smoothing the top over, just to be a little bit fancy. It's up to you how you want to do it, but this is the way that I like to do it. Literally whack it on, make sure it's a little bit poking out on top. See there's plenty of cream in there for all three. Miles loads of cream. Right, now pick it up gently, hold it by the base, smooth it over a little bit, and then scrape it off back into your bowl. Now, pop them back in the fridge until you want them. Either grate some chocolate up or buy some of these chocolate vermicelli or chocolate straws as they're known as. Whack a little bit on top. If you want to put more chocolate on, but more chocolate, it's entirely up to you. Can't go wrong with a bit of chocolate, guys, can you? Right, this is your end result. It does look banging. Let's try some. It's all set nicely. Biscuit's nice and crunchy. Nice bit of banana. Oh. That's a proper adult dessert. The brown is coming through on the bananas. Smoky flavour from the biscuit base. The sweetest of the Chantilly cream. The caramel. You'll never look at a Bonocchi pie the same again. Trust me. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy making the dessert as well.